Craig, Alaska. A peaceful fishing village, nestled away like a postcard. But in September 1982, on one terrible night, something awful shattered the peace. It should have been a happy time for the Colthursts, Mark, his wife who was expecting a baby, and their two little ones. They were celebrating Mark's 28th birthday with their young crew at a cozy restaurant by the water. No one knew it would be their last hurrah. Hey guys, welcome back to your go-to place of dark and captivating true crime stories. We're here at Crimeco to unearth the mysteries that haunt us all, bringing you the stories that'll leave you intrigued. If you dig our content, hit that subscribe button and smash that like button. It helps us keep bringing the chills. Now, grab a drink, snuggle up, and get ready to crack open another crazy case with your favorite crew. All right then, let's dive in. Craig, Alaska. Just a tiny speck of a town tucked away on the wild coast of southeastern Alaska. Back in 1982, only 600 people called Craig home. Everyone knew everyone, and life revolved around catching fish. That was the big business there. The Colthurst family had just moved to Craig from Blaine, Washington, to chase the end of the salmon season and hopefully a brighter future. Mark, the 28-year-old captain, owned a fancy fishing boat called the Investor. It was a beauty, symbol of his hard work and dreams for his young wife Irene, who was expecting, and their two little kids, Kimberly and John. They fit right in with the other fishermen. Mark was a natural on the water, and everyone respected his work ethic. As Mark, Irene, the kids, and their four young deckhands, Chris, Jerome, Dean, and Mike, headed back to the investor that night, they had no idea the nightmare that awaited. The calm harbor lights hid a dark secret. Someone was watching from the shadows unseen as they celebrated Mark's birthday. Then silence, and Craig, Alaska would never be the same. An unseen horror unfolded, a burst of violence that would scar this quiet town forever. The fate of the Colthurst family and their crew that September night would become a chilling mystery, one that Alaska and the entire country would never forget. The heart of this awful story is Mark Colthurst, a young go-getter captain who was making a big name for himself in the tough Alaskan fishing business. He was only 28 when his life was ripped away, his dream of early retirement vanishing in the blink of an eye. Mark raised by hardworking folks, loved the water since he was a teenager. By 16, he was already a skilled fisherman. Everyone could see his talent and how hard he worked. By his mid-twenties, Mark owned the top-of-the-line fishing boat, the Investor, one of the best in Alaska. His crew looked up to him, a great captain they all wanted to be like. Jerome, one of the crew members' brother said, admired Mark. He was one of the best. That's why Mark and his family ended up in Craig that September to catch the last haul of salmon before the season ended. Even though they weren't from there, the Colthursts fit right in. Mark was friendly, and the whole family joined in town events. They were a welcome addition to Craig's tight-knit community. So, as Mark, his pregnant wife Irene, their two little ones, and their excited crew celebrated his birthday at a restaurant by the water, they had no idea it would be their last hurrah. A dark secret was waiting in the shadows, ready to destroy the peace of Craig, Alaska, and forever scar this remote town. The birthday celebration at the Craig waterfront was winding down. It was around 9.30 p.m., and Mark, Irene, the kids, and their crew were saying their goodbyes. They were all headed back to the investor, the pride of Craig's harbor. But lurking in the darkness was a horrible secret, a killer waiting to strike with a cold-blooded fury. In the quiet that followed, the unseen monster snuck onto the investor, picking off Mark, Irene, their young crew, Chris, Jerome, Dean, and Mike, one by one in a shocking act of violence. No one could understand it. The next morning, around 6 a.m., the first clue emerged. 
Folks on the docks saw the investor drifting with its engines still running. Something wasn't right. When they got closer, what they found sent shivers down everyone's spine. The once bustling boat was silent, stained with blood. This wasn't a fishing trip gone wrong. This was a massacre. The police swarmed the scene, piecing together the nightmare. Mark and Irene, both 28, were gone, shot multiple times. Even worse, their innocent children, Kimberly, five, and John, four, were also victims. As for the crew, only parts of Chris, Jerome, Dean, and Mike remained. The attack was so savage, it was hard to tell how badly they'd been hurt. Then came another horrifying detail. The culprit, in a final act of hate, tried to sink the investor by flooding the engine. But that wasn't enough. They also set the boat on fire, destroying any evidence that might have been left behind. Sprague, once a peaceful town, was shattered. This wasn't just a crime, it was a slaughter. The hunt for the killer began, but as days turned into weeks and weeks into months, the case became a chilling mystery, one that Alaska would never forget. The quiet town of Craig was in shock. The investigator massacre left everyone reeling, and investigators from all over Alaska swarmed the scene. They had one big job, find the monster who did this. Right from the start, it was an uphill battle. The fire destroyed most of the evidence, and the victims' bodies were barely recognizable. Putting together what happened that night felt impossible. Then, a name emerged. John Peel, a 24-year-old who used to work for the Colthursts on the Investor. Peel, from Bellingham, Washington, had been on the crew in 1980 and 1981. Things supposedly went sour between him and Mark Colthurst, so Peel found work on a different Craig boat for 1982. Here's the creepy part. Some folks saw Peel and Colthurst talking at the restaurant by the water just hours before the tragedy. Plus, Peel was definitely in Craig that night. This was enough to raise red flags for the investigators. The case blew up nationwide, and the focus on Peel intensified. By 1984, Almost two years later, they hit him with charges for all eight murders and burning the investor down, which destroyed most of the evidence. The prosecution believed Peel held a deep grudge against the Colthursts because of their falling out. They argued this, along with him being in Craig that night, made him the main suspect. But Peel's defense team fought back hard. They painted him as a good guy with no history of violence. One of Peel's friends even said, he wouldn't hurt a fly. I'd sooner believe my mom did it than Peel. The case against Peel relied mostly on circumstantial evidence, including a police report some thought might be a fake confession. As the trial went on, it became clear the prosecution's case wasn't strong enough. After a super long and very public trial, over six months, the jury couldn't agree. They were deadlocked, so it ended in a mistrial. Two years later, they tried Peel again, but still couldn't decide if he was guilty or innocent. In the end, Peel walked free. He even sued Alaska later, saying they wrongly accused him. The state settled for $900,000, which showed how weak the case against him really was. The worst part? It means the real killer might still be out there. Even though John Peel was found not guilty, the killings on the investor remained a giant question mark. The investigators were sure he did it. We got our guy, said a retired cop who helped with the case. Just because the jury couldn't convict doesn't mean he's innocent. It just means they didn't have enough proof. But as time went by, the cracks in the case started to show. There wasn't much real evidence that police report might have been messed with and the whole crime scene was just too awful. It all added up to a big feeling of unease. Mark Colthurst's sister, Lori Hart, couldn't shake it. For years, she thought Peel was guilty for sure, but then she met him and now she's not so convinced. Maybe he didn't do the killings himself, Lori says, but I still think he knows more than he's letting on. It's no wonder Lori and the rest of the Colthursts are frustrated. This wasn't just about eight lives lost. This took away closure and justice from a whole town, from all of Alaska. 
The case went cold, and a chilling question hung heavy. Who did this horrible thing? Why the Colthurst and their crew? The fire that destroyed the investor seemed to have swallowed the answers along with it. For those who loved the victims, the pain is still raw. It's a wound that won't heal. And Craig, Alaska, will forever be marked by the shadow of the investor massacre. Peaceful fishing town, a beautiful place, but a place where darkness can strike without warning. Over 35 years have passed since the Alaskan fishing town of Craig was shattered by the nightmare on the investor. The Colthursts, Mark, Irene, their little ones Kimberly and John, and their young crew were all tragically taken in a night of unthinkable violence. This attack, the worst unsolved mass killing in Alaska's history, still haunts the town. The coldness of the crime, the way the killer tried to erase any trace of what they did, all adds to the unease. Police zeroed in on John Peel, a former crew member who had a falling out with Mark. But the evidence wasn't strong enough and Peel walked free. As time passes, the chances of finding the real culprit seem to shrink. For Lori, Mark's sister, the pain and unanswered questions are a heavy weight. Someone did this, she says, and someone knows. But I won't let it control my life anymore. Even John Peel, though cleared of the crime, can't escape the shadow of the investor. Craig tries to move on, but the memory of that night lingers. The Coldhursts and their crew are gone, but not forgotten. Their story is a stark reminder of how precious life is and how important it is to hold on to the good times. And for those who love them, the search for answers and justice may never truly end, even as the years tick by and the case remains unsolved. All right, guys, before you dash off into the night, don't forget to hit that like button. It lets us know you're digging the content and that keeps the creepy cases coming your way. While you're at it, smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. You don't want to miss our next dive into the mysterious unknown. Thanks for joining us on this journey and we'll see you on the flip side for another mind-blowing case. Until then, stay curious.